So I think we often get asked, like, you know, parts of Vault, some of the functionality exists as cloud native capability, like, you know, KMS, for example. How do you think about sort of the difference between some of those cloud native services like KMS and Vault and what it offers? Yeah, so there's a couple ways. I mean, one is philosophical, and the philosophical approach is that Vault is sort of centralized, you know, security um, for for a lot of security. So it's it's a key management system, it's an encryption system, it's a PKI system, it's just secret storage. Uh, it does all these things in one box, and philosophically, that's important because you know we believe that it's easier to secure and keep your eyeballs and watch, you know, one and. and have access control for one central security solution than it is to repeat that best practice, you know, a dozen or more times. It, you're, you're better, you're more likely to do something right one time than to do it right multiple times. And so, with Vault, philosophically, we think you should focus in on there. And instead, these cloud native solutions are very much feature oriented. You adopt one and another, and you mix and match. Um, and so, I think philosophically, there's that. But then, technically, uh, it, they're also cloud specific usually. And a big benefit of Vault is that it could run anywhere. It could run on your laptop. It could run on your on-prem data center in the cloud, um, in any cloud provider, basically. Mm -hmm. And so a big reason to adopt Vault is to have control of that data and most importantly, be able to replicate it in order in, in other regions, other data centers, other cloud providers. Uh, and that's a feature that we provide with Vault. And so I think those are the two biggest just Stepping away from features, I mean, right. just just higher level philosophical. Reasons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe I'll add to that, which I think you you mentioned it, which is like you can deploy Vault in these different cloud environments, and I think that also opens up a pretty useful use case around identity brokering, right? The notion of what if I have an app that's running on premise, but it needs to read and write from AWS S3, right? Or I have an app running in Amazon, but it needs to read and write from Google's blog store or some service in Google, right? great, my app running in Amazon, it gets an identity provided through IAM from Amazon, but that doesn't mean anything to Google, it doesn't mean anything to Azure. So you need some sort of identity translation or brokering so that Vault can actually fill that role, right? You can log in and authenticate and say, hey, I'm a web server running on Amazon, here's my IAM token, now I'd like to get a Google credential that lets me read and write from Blob Store, right? So in that sense, because you can run Vault across all these sites, it can act as a sort of translation broker which in a way that sort of a native service can't play the, the sort of same role. Right, I think another benefit of it, I mentioned you know, running Vault on your laptop. I mean, I actually think that's a really big deal because in a, in a runtime environment, not so much, but from a development standpoint, it's really important. If you're using a cloud native service, you either have to have an internet connection, you have to have an account, a billing system set up so you could actually do stuff. And if you're doing something as simple as secret storage or even encryption, it's a pretty big burden to have to set that up. And with Vault, you can just run it all locally in dev mode, and the API is there, and you just hit it. And I think right. that that's really valuable for, yeah. from a development velocity standpoint. 